Right, welcome to another episode of Irish Success Podcast. And on the other side, we have Laura Odw- Laura Odwire from Master Training College. We have a health and safety person here, basically. And we're going to talk about the importance of health, health and safety in a business place, because every business should follow the health and safety, and almost none of them do. <laughs> That's very true. That's exactly so could you tell us a few words about yourself? And what is it exactly that you do? And what services do you provide to people? And then we're going to jump into the health and safety stuff. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Laura O'Dwyer, um, and I am the owner of Master Training College. Um, I provide health and safety services, but I also, my niche is consultancy services and site inspections for people, just making sure that they're fully legally compliant. I also do the, the usual legislation training, such as manual handling, food safety, VDU assessments, which is how I met yourself. <laughs> um, and yeah, I do, I do a lot of other business stuff as well. Like I do coaching for, you know, young people who want to go into apprenticeships. So I do career coaching, job mm. skills. I work with a lot of youth reach programs um, and I work with college and skills so basically well. businesses that need to up their game they would contact you you'd come into the workplace sorry let me put this on silence no worries so and they would basically contact you and you would come in the way you came into my office yeah essentially <laughs> yeah so i how i started was i actually had hurt my back mm. very badly when i was about 24 and it was because i suppose from young age working in bars you know you're lifting kegs you're doing all yeah. that you just don't think about it yeah. And it was a friend of mine who said to me, well, have you ever done manual handling? And I said, yeah, but that's just lifting a box. How is that going to help me? Mm. So when I done the instructor course, I realized, oh, wow, this could actually save my back issues. Mm. And it did because it made me think Mm -hmm. about it's not just lifting. It's everything you do in Mm. everyday life of how you can actually not hurt your back. And then I decided, okay, I'll become a manual handling instructor and I'll become a HACCP instructor. And then... I got my health and safety degrees and I said, hey, let's go and help some small businesses. And it started off with painters or plumbers who had two or three staff members, had no health and safety statement, had no training, had got away with it for years. But then an issue would happen Mm. or like an injury and they would be liable for so much. That's when the problem started. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize how liable people are. Yeah. without having these simple documents in place yeah, yeah. and they so can that's crucify you so that's this is exactly the next thing i would like to jump in because we have to think about our audience you know they want to get as much value from this as they can mm-hmm. so let's say a plumber is watching us or like, let's say a roofer is watching us look i'll tell you a funny story downstairs in the shop we got calls from roofers and they were asking us what is the health and safety because they bought products from us they went on to a job and they were run from a job because they didn't even have simple things as the health and safety statement never mind you know mm-hmm. all the paperwork work for the lads you know so this podcast is about this yeah and just to clarify I suppose what a health and safety statement is because if people don't realize what it is Mm. it's your declaration as a company that you are dedicated to keeping yourself your employees your clients and your visitors safe and that essentially is a document to say here is how we manage health and safety in our business Mm -hmm. and then what we do is what we call risk assessments Mm -hmm. risk assessments is health and safety so so risk assessments should be done for every specific job I mean everything, even from the simplicity of having someone take paper from an office and put it into a printer. You should have a risk assessment done on that. I, realistically. It, like realistically, <laughs> like, and that's sometimes the stagnant about health and safety where it's all too much paperwork. But what essentially it is, is looking at something and saying, well, what risks are involved? How could I hurt myself and what control measures should I put in? Train your staff on that, have it on paperwork. And if anything happens, you as a company... Mm. have done your due diligence Mm. and it all falls under what we call the health and safety at welfare at work act 2005 and as an employer just has to do everything that is reasonably practical to protect their staff Mm. and if you're seen to be doing that you'll be okay but Mm. if you're not you're Mm. just opening yourself up to everything exactly would you believe that we get most of the commercial jobs because we have all the health and safety stuff in Mm -hmm. place yeah and the clients tell us that specifically guys you're here because you're good and you have all the papers because uh, he said that whenever they call a roofer to have a look at a school roof let's say they just come in the usual oh you know and and none of them have all the paperwork you know almost none of them and a lot of the time it's subcontractors who won't have it and there are there else they're sole traders and that's how i got started was Small sole traders who went in to work for a client had a problem on site. They got blamed for it. Because, and I said, well, you don't have your health and safety documents. Just because you're working for someone and they have theirs, you still have to have your own. So what if someone gives me a call and says, 
I'm about to do a job and I have no health and safety statement. I just need a certain amount of information, what tools they use, how many employees they have, the kind of the general scope of the job. And then I essentially will be able to do up all of their risk assessments and their safety statement for that so they can go on to a job. Mm. Or if there was a specific requirement like an environmental policy, um, disciplinary policy, grievance policies, because I also have a HR degree. So I put HR and health and safety together so in one big bundle and then like you said a lot of my clients get the jobs because they're up to date yeah you have to yeah so the importance look they're, they're, I'd say look the real reason for health and safety is to keep people safe but I would like I did it from that point of view but also the more legit your business looks in terms of the paperwork and the health and safety the bigger clients you're going to attract sure. isn't that sure. like I'm trying to sell it to people because yeah. they're, they're watching here oh, Lucas is full of shit talking about well, this and no, but it's I'm true. giving them good reason yeah and, and also could I be on, on that as well it's the attitude towards health and safety that I, f I have I find really disappointing from companies that oh yeah we don't actually need it but it's only when someone actually hurts themselves or god forbid dies on the property mm. that they're like oh my god health and safety matters and mm. I've been in situations where it's only I've given them all the advice in the world and it would have cost them very little just to have this in place but no it doesn't matter then someone has a small accident like one guy falls off a step uh, an A-frame ladder breaks his foot they have a claim in, plus they're paying for all the medical expenses. But if they had just had this one document and trained that staff member. Brilliant. So let me have another question here. So let's say if, if let's say I have a company and somebody falls of eight, eight let's say a, a couple of step ladder, right? Mm -hmm. If they fall and I have all the paperwork in place, that means that I'm covered with my insurance company. Is that what it is? Essentially, yes. And if, then if I don't have it. If you don't have it. Essentially, excuse my language, you're screwed. Yeah. Um, if, well, that's actually a yeah, good word. Yeah. I, I, was, I was thinking you're yeah. going to smash something no, here. No, excuse no, my you, language. you are. You're, you're just, you're asking Hold on, for... do you mind if I, uh, if I have a drink here? Do you want no, work with... I am. Sure, why not? Wait, yeah, it's well. not going to kill us. Exactly. Um, yeah, so essentially... And I, I know I won't say if you have all the paperwork, you're automatically protected. Every situation is different so it, it comes down to doing an inspection and that's why the likes of your accident report forms yes oh we have that yeah, yeah. if you have an accident on site and you have an accident uh, report like form a, a dash of no just, just straight like be perfect Jesus, that. Right. <laughs> I'm the only girl here I suppose <laughs> I no actually to... I will I will sure it's Friday I'll, I suppose I'll, I'll have something I'll have a little dash in it yeah that's I'll, I'll have do. a little dash as well please yeah, and essentially, so it comes down to if you have your accident report form and you've done your investigation um, and if you can you can prove that it was the employee's mm. fault, then you'll be OK. Let's do a step by step for the last. Whoever is watching this, they need a step by step because we're going to do a lot of yapping and people need a step by step. What do they need? Let's say somebody has a construction company. What is the first thing they should have? The health and safety statement. Yes, right? but first thing they have to have is their health and safety policy. Right. Right. Which How is, do they which go is about a declaration. It? Just a one page declaration that we we care about health and safety mm -hmm. that should be displayed for view for all visitors or guests or anyone who kind of comes into their business. Then you need to have your health and safety statement, which mm -hmm. essentially is sometimes it can be 20, sometimes it's 100, sometimes it's 300 pages. It depends, depends on what you on do. What our one is yeah. what that take. But it depends. Yeah. Like if you're a one man operation and you have a small business, it'll probably be something. Smaller. Yeah. And there's a beautiful thing um, that the HSE do where it's called. Um, Sorry, B, oh, what's it called? I'll remember it, but you can go online essentially and you can do up your own health and safety statement. I know that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and uh, it just protects you. Um, yeah, it's for, it's for anybody that doesn't want to hire people and they just can do it yeah. themselves. It's actually easy. It's a very, it is, but yeah. those safety statements, they cover you to a point, but they're not essentially. They're not specific, yeah. They're not specific and they'll show that you're compliant, but you know, you haven't gone into all the small details of a business. Um, and then they need to have what we call their risk assessments. And that is the risks of every job that they do or any task that they do and how what control measures. Then they need to have their training records, how they've actually trained people in, in it. And once they have that, that's kind of the basics of what you need. And then mm. the rest will follow depending on the job. Mm. So certain companies will ask for your grievance and disciplinary policies. Mm. Um, a lot of another big problem is a lot of people won't put someone on a contract. Oh, yeah. And they think that they're if they have all the health and safety, that's perfect. But if they're not on a contract of employment, mm. it's kind of so. Let good. me. I'm going to try to put it in the easiest words possible, right? A lot of you guys already know this stuff, but look, the f you need three circles that they have to be boxed off in your company. One of them is your health and safety statement. You do it once a year. 
Yeah, right? once a year has to be reviewed. Once year. a year, you do your health and safety statement. You need to have that. Whenever you get a job for a big company, they're going to add the first thing they're going to ask is a health and safety statement, right? The second thing you need to have is for every job that you do, there needs to be risk assessment. It's called the RAMS. Yeah. I, I was just about to say they're mm. called RAMS. And what that is, it's called a risk assessment and method statement. So yes. essentially, your risk assessments will always kind of stay the same. But your method statement will change. So the scope, the sequence of works, mm. the site entrance, the dates, the times, the personnel and the PP that you will use. So you have to register what personal protective everybody is wearing, why they're wearing it. But certain jobs, you mightn't have it. So you can't have the same rams yeah. for everything. You yeah. know? So the, what I was going to say, you can hire Laura here. She can do your health and safety statement. And then let's say on the first three jobs, you get the rams. And then you can basically go... I'm not well, going to say I, copy and paste, but you have to adjust no, it yourself. No, essentially, yeah. What I do is I offer RAMS templates so they can just adjust oh, yeah. it. Yeah, so I'll do all the risk assessments. And even at that, you know, yesterday I have a client, they go on retainer with me for the year. If there's a problem, they ring me. I go down to the site. I investigate all their accidents for them. One of my unique selling points is I do um, site inspections. Mm -hmm. And that means if you have people working at two o'clock in the morning on a site... I will actually go down and what we have is what we have site reports. So it just looks good as a company that you have report inspections to say we've got someone who goes on to every site before the job has started. And I, I will see something that they might have missed and say, before you start the job, make sure this paperwork, get them what they call a safety folder that they bring on to every site. And if a contractor comes, here's here's all our documentation. And that's kind of I worked on the sites and. If you, and that's essentially what I did for people was set them up. So if any contractor came along from high up, they just handed their folder and they were left alone because yeah. they were 100% brilliant, compliant. Brilliant, because yeah. they, they can turn to a disaster, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was the second one, the RAMS. And the third one, every company, whenever you're training people, you should have uh, basically a portfolio of every, every man. Like, you know? Oh, yes. What you should have is what, you, what I call your, your employee files. So let's say somebody is a roofer. Mm -hmm. They do what I do. What should they have? Because I know what they should have. I want them to hear it from you. Well, they're going to have first thing they're going to have to have is they're working at heights training. Working um, at heights. So yes, that's one. That's one. If they use harnesses and stuff, that sometimes is included in the working at heights. But if you're working in very specific jobs, you might have to have extra harness training. Yeah, so, so that's two, that's two trainings already, boys. Inspecting the har you have to have your manual handling training. Manual handling. You have to have obviously the main pass because the safe pass. Yeah. Now, safe pass, even you're you're not going on to commercial sites, you still need to have a safe pass to work in the business in the, in the construction industry. The boys, yeah. yeah. So that's that. And then what? Manual handling, we said already. Yeah, your manual handling. They're probably going to need their MEWP to yeah, operate platforms. I was going to say, yeah, yeah your, your MUP training, your forklift training. Um, if they're using, you know, internally, then you would do the training of ladders. Mm. You know, there's not essentially a course on ladders. But, you know, how they inspect the ladders, they should be inspected every week. I think there week. was, where did we do it? There was a course on ladders, actually, in fact, was there? To be honest, there probably is. There's courses for everything Yeah. Um, for in terms of health Somebody and told ladders. us to have a course on ladders when we went onto a site working for a pharmaceutical company. <laughs> That's what they uh, requested. Yeah. And actually, Nobody else yeah. would request it, but only, only them, them And to be honest, <laughs> ladders is one of the biggest issues that I have on sites is it's, it, it's a problem because people don't think about it. And then, or else if you use somebody else's ladder... And you haven't inspected it and they have an accident. Well, who's liable there? Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have used the ladder. But if it was inspected and it was safe, then essentially the person who used the ladder, that's the that's his fault mm. or her fault, whoever used it. So well, look, it's like getting the end of a car, you know, it's your it's, exactly it's up to same. you to check that yeah. all the discs are in place, yeah. you know. And then you'd have to have your general right. tool training. So obviously how to use tools. And if there's anything specific that they use, they'll have to, for example, they might have to get abrasive wheels training. You you Not in that kind of roofing industry. But depending on what you're doing, so mechanics would have to have that sort of stuff as well. Brilliant. Look, guys, the reason why we're even talking about this is you will not be able to scale your company if you don't do those right. Yeah. Those three circles that I wrote here, right, they're, they're, they're the most important in a business because nobody, absolutely nobody will hire you on a big commercial project if you don't have those. And look, and you look good as a, honestly, you know, from an employee's point of view. You know, you're, I'm going to work for I'm going to want to work for somebody who cares about my health and safety and I'm going to do a lot more for them 
than if they don't. That's why, you, you know? know, people say this is the biggest myth. People say, oh, there's a big shortage of work, workmen, good labors. There we get contacted every single day. Somebody is looking for a job and they're good skilled tradesmen. And usually when I ask them, what brought you here? And he says, oh, your company looks the business online. The health and safety is everything. I want to be a part of your gig. Yeah. That's and what also they say to as, me. as an employer, you have less stress, you have less worry, less risk. I know. It costs, as I say, it might, people might think it's expensive to get their health and safety set up. But it costs more when there's a claim in and you don't have it. Yeah. And it will always happen. And yeah. essentially... You just get it done because as you say you only have to update it for the job that you're doing or once a year mm. you know and especially when covid came in it was just a simple matter of you have a covid 19 policy and then you just add that to your safety statement and you're sorted mm. you know that's all and every time there's a new thing you just add it to your safety statement and if, the, if even if you had from a hr point of view if you have something like an unfair dismissals claim or anything like that the first thing they're going to ask you is Where's your training? Where's your health and safety documents? Exactly. That's why people need somebody like you. Because what you know, like if I'm talking to people, there's some guys out there, they're already doing mm -hmm. big jobs and you tell them about HR and they don't even know what it is. Have they don't know what it is. Hasn't, haven't got a clue. And 90% um, of my business at the start was actually how I got into health and safety was by doing my HR and realizing that like none of them had contracts, none of them had, they were so liable. Mm. And then I just said, oh, here, I'll do a package. And that's just kind of how my business grew, mm. you know. Mm. Every business should hire you and let, let them look through your yeah. business. Because and, and I'm there. I, I'm kind of <coughs> different where, yes, I'm a consultant, but I, I, I have a family business. My parents ran pubs for years. I've always been kind of an entrepreneur and I always kind of feel just to help people. So I'm not in it essentially to make money. I make money in my own ways in mm -hmm. different areas. But when it comes to the consultancy, I'm there to advise and help. And it's not about the money for me. Mm -hmm. It's about making sure that they don't actually have an employee that hurts themselves or mm. breaks their leg. Or Do you have paralyzed. any horror stories? Obviously, oh. we won't be mentioning names or companies, you know, but you must have something I, behind your belt I, I, that I is have, hilarious I almost. Have, <laughs> I have many, many a story. <laughs> Give me a category. Um, <laughs> right. So can you tell us a story of a company maybe who didn't hire you but got a inquiry with you but then they said let's not get it and then they had an accident is there yeah, something like yeah that? that happens do you actually, have someone like yeah, that? a lot, a oh, lot really? where i go in and do it and i said they paid me for it and i give them all the advice and then i get a call three months later oh laura this has happened and i said well did you follow any of the procedures i gave you no okay well you're going to have a claim for example the simplicity of we had um you were talking about forklifts they had hired a new employee very very eager you know they kind of hadn't given him any training on forklifts. They just kind of threw him in the deep end, essentially. So he was trying to do the right thing and he wanted to do his job and there was a forklift there. He just decided, oh, sure, do you know what I'll do? I'll get up on this and I'll drive it. He ended up reversing it back. But he hit a wall, hit an oil drum and cost my client 450,000 euro in damage. Wow. Just because he just... <clears throat> Close to a half a mil. Just, just because he, he was being eager. Um, that was a very awkward situation for me because it was actually the employee's fault, but my client was liable um, for the damage because he hadn't actually done the induction training. He just threw your man in, had nothing signed to say he was trained. So essentially... Nothing on paper. So no if, paper. if it's not on paper, it's, it's not, not on there. Pa yeah, if it's not on paper, Look, it's not there. Yeah, and do you know what? I even tell, say this to my lads. Guys, when you're making phone calls somewhere, always write down the name your of who you're speaking book. to. Your little black book yeah. is your Bible. Because, you know? you know, you can call the company back. Oh, yeah, I was speaking to somebody within your company. And I'd say, who were you speaking to and mm -hmm. what time? And if you don't have those details, even silly uh, things oh, like that. Only, if it's not on paper, it's not there. <laughs> um, when I, I suppose, being on big sites that I've been on, working with 20 or 30 different contractors, and I go in for a small company with 30 people. Um, I like that, a lot of hearsay. But I, what I always say is I had my little black book. Every conversation that I had, I read it down. And if they tried to say, well, we said this, I'm like, no, actually, here's the time, here's the date. <laughs> and this is exact conversation topics. And it just yeah. protected me because yeah. egos are a big thing for people. And especially in this kind of industry, the construction industry can be, it can be a lot of egos. And that's essentially the people's biggest flaw mm. is by being too proud and then trying to, you know, hide their mistakes rather than just owning up to them and actually doing something about them. Mm. Um, and supervisors try to put it onto their employees that mm. it was their mistake. Yeah. Um, like, I think I told you this the last time where we had one supervisor. He want, It was a Friday, he wanted to go home. Sorry. It was a Friday and he wanted to go home and basically he 
the cement mixer had been going a bit dodgy. But he decided, oh, sure, listen, it'll be fine. I'm here on Monday. Um, he slept in that morning. The Monday morning, apprentice came in, turned the machine on, went in front of the machine, started going rapidly, cement burns all over. Um, and of course, the supervisor was liable for that because he never reported the default. And his, he said, if, oh my God, I wouldn't mind. He had a sticker in his, in his pocket that he could have just put it on to say, do not use. But he was so eager to get home. Mm. And so that was a that was a very awkward situation yeah, as well. That was a, a tough one. I have something here. Let me t- tell me if I'm right here. I think that the health and safety is such an exaggeration on sites because of the amount of unskilled labors that they bring from mm-hmm. co- from uh, agencies. Would that be right? I think that's what it is. They bring complete idiots onto sites <laughs> and they have to have a protocol of how are they not going to kill themselves. It's a bit roof, I, roof I, language, I, I, but that's, I, I, where, no, that's but how I, I see I'm it. I'm going to essentially 100% agree with you on that. Um, yeah. But yeah. look, my guys, none of my guys need all that. My guys are weapons. They've been in this game for 10 years. Mm-hmm. You know, they can do it with their eyes closed. But on a big site, it doesn't work no. like that. You no. cannot, ver- let's say a big but company. But you can't control, you see, the thing is, you can't control, for example, if you look at those big sites, I mean, the minimum, there's sites. like three to 4,000 people on that site. Yeah, yeah. So as the main contractor, they put it down to the, to the people who are working. And that's essentially why you have to have if you've over 25 employees you have to have what we call a part-time health and safety officer so someone is there looking anything over 50 employees you have a full-time health and safety officer on site making sure everything's okay and their job essentially is to walk around the area to see if there's any hazards and if they are close them off train the guys if something goes wrong or they get stood down because they haven't wore their hard hat and this is another thing that really upsets me with the employees with their attitude towards health and safety, like, I don't want to wear my hard hat. And it's like, well, it's not up to us. If you're, if the main contractor asks you to wear a hard hat and you don't wear it and you get taken off site, I'm under no obligation to get you more work. You could lose your job. Yeah. It's that simple. For simple, silly. I think I told you the story before about the roofer in the UK who mm-hmm. lost a two million contract because the lads refused to wear PPE, which is crazy. Which is, yeah. It's, and also, if you look, again, I hate to go back to the Health and Safety Welfare Work Act, you know, you have your employer and your employee's responsibilities. Um, it's your employee's r- responsibility to wear it. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they don't wear it, they could be they could be <coughs> fired under gross misconduct, which means there's no it doesn't matter. HR be damned, you didn't follow the health and safety rules, you, you've lost your job. Mm. Uh, could it be like, you know, I've applied this system in my business and I don't know if it's a, if this is the right way to do it. I'm also, also going to pick your brains here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we have one guy who is responsible for the, not the health and safety, but he's responsible for all the PPE. So let's say there's 30 people working there and there's one guy and I say to them, right guys, when they start with me here's your package all of the stuff is there so here please sign the note here that i've given it to you and on the bottom it says whenever one of those items is damaged or needs replacing you contact that guy Mm -hmm. so when i'm employing somebody i'm giving them what they need and i never have to think about it again am i in the right by doing this? essentially because once you've given them the personal protective equipment and like what the beautiful thing is my advice to everyone is get signatures for everything Mm-hmm. there's no point in having a company safety statement or all of this and having no signatures that your employees have actually read it mm-hmm. it should be emailed out to them and it should be signed that they have read it because then the responsibility of the employees that I've actually read it so in terms of personal protective equipment it is up to them to report any damage and that's in the legislation that once it's provided to you even if it's the smallest tear mm-hmm. um And obviously, you know, legally, you guys have to pay for the personal protective equipment. Mm. And I think a lot of employees say, oh, they won't pay for it or I've damaged safety boots. And it's like, well, they're four years old. Ask your employer for a new pair or go out. Is there employers like that that wouldn't pay? I oh, suppose yeah. it would be. They, I have a lot of employers who think that mm. they don't have to pay until. And that's why sometimes I'm not very liked a lot. My clients don't particularly like me, um, but I'm there to protect them. And mm. they, they won't like what I have to say. A lot of the time and they'll think it's silly or completely pointless or totally over the top. But like I said, it's only then when they don't have it that they're like, why didn't I just listen to you in the first place? What about that? So, right, we covered the bigger companies. If somebody has a 20 plus employees, but what about the small operations, one man operations, you know, because there's a lot of those guys that could be watching us here and they want to learn as well. But look, I know from experience that if I was to do every single job, small job, by Mm -hmm. the book, there would never be any profit. Oh, of course. In fact, it'll be physically impossible to carry on. I agree. And again, I will kind of contradicting myself here. Health and safety is there to protect people. 
it's not ob- ob- always going to actually happen the way you have it on paper. Yeah. But it's just about doing your due diligence and making sure that your employees are aware mm. of what they're doing. So the simplicity of, I have this all the time with manual handling. If you're lifting a mattress up five stairs and there's no elevator, technically like that's not good for you but it's up to the employees rather than lifting it on their own stop for a second go and ask a colleague give you a hand and just think about it rather than just going and then you'll rip your back apart and then blame the employer and say well you didn't give me the right tools sometimes the tools aren't there and you physically can't do the job but you still have to think about the safest way to do it in the situation that you have Mm. small sole traders (coughs) they still need the documentation, even if it's for themselves to say, I have a health and safety policy, I have, you know, a responsibility for every client and they should be sending that to every client and that will cover them in relation to that. They're taking responsibility for their own health and safety. Mm. For example, I have a friend of mine. He over the summer decided to do landscaping and he hired two of his friends. And I said to him, do you have your public liability insurance? What's that? And I said, well, you're working in public, you're going to people's houses. You need to have your public liability insurance in case anything happens. He had no idea about this and he'd been working for nearly a month. I got him in touch with my insurance person. I think it cost him like three or four hundred quid and he was covered. And I said, now, you've got two employees. What have you done to protect them from cutting their arm? You know, they're using all these sharp tools. And he said, Laura, I would never have thought about this. All I wanted to do was cut grass and make a living just for the yeah. summer yeah. and he was like you you scared me and he actually said I'm not going to hire the guys or until I have all the health and safety I'm stopping because it's like that I said friends are friends until one of them cuts, their, cuts oh, themselves oh yeah there's no friends and they will take you to the cleaners for yeah. everything that's worth you yeah. know okay so now I want to cover another topic here because there is almost a religion out there of people who go and claim they have trip over their own shoelaces and they think they have the rights to sue and they're successful that's the worst thing <sighs> Most of the time, they're successful. Uh, 90% of the time, they're successful. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story. So when I first started my business, I kind of was going into a lot of different elements, but I became what I call a secret employee. So if people were having issues with, you know, things being robbed or a very high claim industry for injuries, I would go in as a new employee to figure out what's essentially going on. In one particular So you're company. like an undercover employee, basically. An undercover employee, yeah. To, to <laughs> you're go still, in, you're still, I, I, I will do it for people if they need it, definitely. It's a very good way um, because I can kind of see. And also what I do is I get what the employees are telling me. So they'll, you know, as you start off, oh, by the way, if you if you change, there's no camera there if you want. Like I, people were telling me how to steal stuff within the first week and I'm sitting there going oh my god what's going on Um, yeah yeah definitely there was one particular instance where I had one gentleman he'd been working in the company for 15 years I'd say and we were we were mopping a floor and he said oh by the way just to let you know there's no camera there so if you wanted to have a slip you'd make a fortune he said it very jokely and I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, well, for the last five years, I've gotten about 125,000 out of the company because I've fallen a few times in this particular area. And in that what moment, an yeah, and, and in that moment, I had to say, I obviously had to kind of my cover. I decided, right, I'm blowing my cover here because I, and said, did, you blow I did. I told him straight out. I said, by the way, you shouldn't tell me that. I said, why? And he said, I said, I'm here as an undercover to find out why they have such a high claim history here and you've just told me. I said, so if I were you, I'd be resigning from this job as soon as possible because I'm going to be reporting this um, tomorrow and they're they're all false claims. There so you go, guys. Whoever is watching this, you can hire this lady. Yeah. This is genius here. <laughs> yeah, or even where there was issues where someone was saying, oh, you know, I do a job. I have a, I have a client who works for lightning and surge protection. And obviously you have your copper coils. And he said, you know, Lord, I'm spending all this money and, and I go to a job and I, and I, 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 you know, it's all there. But then the staff are telling me that they've used more. And I said, OK, well, why don't we just go and inspect their vans? And he said, oh, we can't do that. I said, OK, we sent out a letter to tell everyone we'll be inspecting your vans. Um, 24 hours later, I went out and we got a lot of money back from the guys off recycling their own copper. No way. Yeah. And they, they had all the 24 hours and they didn't oh, clean up? They didn't clean up because they didn't read the emails. <laughs> no way. Yeah, they didn't. And they said, well, you can't do this. They said, no, we, we, we gave you 24 hours notice. Um, same where I've had people saying people are, you know, smoking narcotics or 
drinking on sites. And again, I go up and that they hire me specifically to try and catch people doing that. That's um, a big one. A yeah. lot of companies have that. I know in my country, everybody drinks and works somehow. You know what I mean, but in Ireland, it's everybody smokes and works. Not everybody, but I've seen it a lot. Not in my company. Yeah. I wouldn't have that. Yeah. But I know a lot of my friends who have companies and they tell me this problem. That workers come in and they're stoned out of, out of their head. Look, I have no problem with smoking, but do it on Saturday, whatever, you know. Well, I agree. And also what I think people with smoking don't realize it's just as bad as alcohol. You're under an influence. I think it's worse. Um, it, it, I think it's, it's a worse. lot worse because you're, you know, at least you can see when you're, you know, you've a few drinks on you. But with 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 mar- narcotics, you get you get drowsy, you get silly, and it's going to be yeah, an accident. That where yeah. they'll cut, they'll, they're more likely to cut themselves. Yeah. I, th- I think on alcohol, people might be actually sharper if they take the I, right dose. <laughs> well, I can't say that, but uh, I wouldn't be far off disagreeing because when you when you're when you have a few drinks, you do you you sharpen up a little bit in whatever you're doing. Um, but my only fear is it's the, actually the more so the driving. Yeah, it's the driving that bothers me very much. So if you want to take your own risk and go on and cut your hand off or it's you're driving a vehicle and it's a company vehicle and you have an accident or you, God forbid, hurt someone and you're under the influence, you're going to jail for manslaughter. Is, is there so, yeah, that's you could, a big one. Well, no, but that's essentially if you if you put it down like that, mm. it might only be or if you're working the night shift and you might like a supervisor saying, sure, I'll have one beer. But that one beer is you liable for everything that's on that site? And if you're under the influence, what's the point? Yeah. It's a hundred percent. Have you ever heard, fault. is it possible, you know, if let's say I have a company and I have a problem with lads drinking alcohol on it and I know that it's happening, could you enforce a breathalyzing something like that? Mm-hmm. Is there such a thing? Yes, once you give, <coughs> now again, depending on the company and what your contracts have, and this is where you can update your contracts and your safety statements and handbooks. If you give people notice, as that we do random because even when you work in America and every hotel that I've ever worked in there's been random drug searches random um, bag searches and random um, it wasn't swabs at the time but now you could you we actually had an issue with people stealing from a client like oh. that um, his tools were going missing they were working on a big site we put out a notice to say we're going to be searching your trunks and searching your bags um, if you refuse to open them we're going to take that as suspicion and like that, when we done it, people weren't opening their trunks. We got a, we bulldozed them open and there was some fresh tools that we bought two months ago that they were going to take back home because they were going back to the their own home country for two weeks. And they were basically... Foreigners. Taking, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm not saying that. But it depends, like, when Irish people do it too, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, once you... It's all about communication. Yeah. In terms of that, anything to do with health and safety or anything like that, if you communicate it to your staff and give them ample notice and they're aware that that could happen, yes, you're in your rights, but you you have to, you can't just do it. You have to be very careful and it has yeah. to be genuine suspicion and you need to get your evidence. I actually had this case where there was, you know, blame of somebody drinking alcohol and they said, oh, it's been going on for weeks. And I said, well, what evidence do we have? Where's yeah. the doc? Where's who? Who's suspicious? Where's them to come? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like that, I said, well, guys, if you're suspicious, I need a time. I need a date. I need to. I need to know when, when the suspicion, why they were suspicious. Did anyone talk yes. to them? And a lot of the times, people just do these verbal agreements and have this verbal chat. That means but nothing to me. Verbal agreement you can do with your girlfriend about di- washing dishes. Exactly. Yeah, that's just, you, that can work on a verbal agreement. But anything in work between you and employees can't. No, and it can be the smallest conversation, but right everything down and you you're just you're just protecting yourself in a lot more mm. but yeah once you give people ample warning mm. and it's justified you know yes you can we have covered a lot of the health and safety here on sets we're gonna come back to it but you're also a hr specialist mm-hmm. you know give people an idea of why the hell would somebody call you because look that's how i know you i contacted you i wanted you to come to my office look at the chairs and that was because of one of the lads every time he's on the computer he's like that he was, <laughs> he was literally like that, right? So I said, no, right, the end of that. We need proper chairs, we need proper equipment because next two years, I'll be having lawsuits, right? So that's why I called you. Well, yeah. And you actually, and I, res- I just, on that, I respect that you actually understood the purpose of it because a lot of the time when people hear ergonomics, I'm sure, what's the problem? And I say, well, if you're sitting in a computer for eight hours a day, 
and you have a tweak in your neck think six months down the line look, you, you advised me and I did everything yeah in fairness you did like, I, I even bought this You're you know for bad. my mouse pad I have the bigger keyboard but I don't use keyboard that's why I still have this one because I only use this it, to click the password then it becomes in. like, like I said there were some of your guys who wanted to use them once we've advised them on what's the safest way and mm. you've given them those options if the employee decides not to take those options you've done offered. your job I have it, it on paper offered. that I have offered it yeah. exactly but what I was going to is could we tell people maybe why would they call a HR because you're also you've, you've done your mm-hmm. HR you have a degree in it you know but yes. you, you don't specialize in the HR you specialize in health safety but let's give people some idea on why do they need a HR at least part time if they're employing let's say 10 people could, yeah, what, hey, what, hey. What, what does HR do what, what do you provide let's say? so HR essentially what does it stand for let's employ- say human resources yes so how you manage human beings in a business essentially and it comes down to what their rights are it's protecting the employee and the employer from discrimination from you know treating their staff unfairly and it's very simple the health and safety go yeah. hand in hand because if I am going in to do my health and safety and they don't have a HR sure there's no point mm-hmm. because then if somebody breaches a health and safety violation and they don't have a HR department there's nothing that can be done so your human resources allows you to actually hire and fire people <laughs> to have those policies in place that this is how we work in terms of if you don't do your job here's what here's what we can do we can either put you on probation we can give you an improvement plan mm. we can train you up a little bit more and then if in two months time you're still not up to it unfortunately we'll terminate your contract a lot of the time people just because it's a history it's only very it's only now in the last few years that HR has become quite serious you know yeah. Um. and you just need to have people on a contract and they need to have a handbook which is what is your it's very similar to your safety statement what are how do I handle a grievance if you're bullying me who do I go to? But that's another one. You know, we, we, people. I, I could be sued today whenever I'm firing somebody, even though I have the rights to fire them. They've done. They've made a mistake. But if look, that's thanks to Henry, my business partner here, because he's on the ball. <laughs> he's the one that contacted you realistically, and um, so let's say I want to fire somebody. They made a mess up. They fucked something up. You know, I have the rights yeah. to fire them. It's the, the, a big financial loan, but I can't fire them because they've been with me for two years. They didn't get a warning. They didn't get written. If I fire them, they can sue they me, can and see they will you, be yeah. 100 percent successful yeah so if so if anybody who's watching this and you run a business that's why you should have a HR and health and safety yeah. because you'll be sued Even you will you're and you'll be more likely to be sued for a, an unfair dismissal unfair dismissal is a big thing is a big and and that is essentially the simplicity of like that you have someone on a contract of employment and you think you're sorted no. but you didn't follow the procedure your yeah. own your own disciplinary procedure your disciplinary procedure is your is your bible how do we handle problems and how do we discipline people there's the law and everything it's verbal warning and um, most of the time it gets not everyone but give two verbal warnings then you have one written warning and if you have a final written warning essentially you have a meeting and you give them an ultimatum of you need to get this job done you we're going to give you an extra three months if you do not follow those procedures or meet our standards as a company we'll be terminating your contract mm-hmm. um, and then after that is when you let them go but if you just for example, like even look, a lot of people who will be watching this, there are simple people who have a small business and they mm. don't have all that knowledge. No, no. Like I know when I started, and, and can somebody I also just me, just, I on, just fire just on prices. Uh, just just to clarify as well, I mean, companies are different depending on what they're offering. You just need a contract of employment template. It's going to cost you less than a hundred quid. And you have that there for every employee. You change the hours, you change. And how HR works is within the first five days, every new employee is supposed to get their five core terms of employment, which is the company that they work for, their general hours that they're going to be working, their rate of pay, the location of work. They're the, you know, and the, um, and the company, obviously, that they're working, you know, who they are, their name and their address. That's supposed to be done in the first five days. With After two months, they're supposed to get their full contract of employment, which includes their job description, annual leave, sick pay, grievances, bullying, harassment, and all that sort of stuff. And once you have those basics in place, you're essentially legally compliant um, with the law. But there's so many different things, that you, other elements that might come along. And again, I'm not a... 
I was a HR guru three years ago, but I haven't <laughs> I haven't updated myself on the Here's HR. Here's a HR question, right? And yeah. I have a good one for you, right? One of, let's say two of my employees have a beef with between each other and mm-hmm. one of them is bullying the other one, right? Let's say this escalates and one of them decides to sue. But who do they sue? Do they sue me as an employer or do they sue the other guy who works oh, in here? Oh, that's a very... Uh, tough one, isn't it? That's a very tough, complicated... Well, okay, we'll go... How, my, now, this is not fact. I'm just saying this is what how I... Yeah, would, look, how this is, I, we're just yeah. yapping here. Just because yeah. I know there's a f- there might be a few... Um, like, when I show this to people, they'll be like, Laura, you said the wrong thing, but... How essentially that will come down to two things. If you as an employer saw that this grievance was going on for a long period of time and if it was interfering with work or not, you would try and sit them down. And what we would do is we call, call it a conflict resolution. So well, if you, I ignored it? If you ignored it, you you didn't do everything that was reasonably because this practical. Has happened, this is happening on big sites because every time when they get a labor or a newbie, right? That the What, what do you call them? Yeah, well, like, I know what you mean. You, yeah, but, but he, he gets this thing. So you're not like, oh, listen, I used to love, I used to love years ago when someone walked into the bar for the first time. I was like, lovely. I would ask them yeah. to do the craze. Go get me a, a crate of diet water. <clears throat> um, You know, the long stand for anyone who doesn't know, you know, you, we had, it's kind of a hospitality joke where you get them to go to a bar, the local bar. And you say, would you ask them for the long stand? And every barman will know, OK, just leave them standing there for about 15 minutes. And then they, you know, get them to go to another bar. So they'd be about 35 <laughs> to 40 minutes going to three different bars and standing at the bar. And they're like, I'm waiting for the long stand. Yeah. And then they, the last person would say, oh, did you enjoy your long stand? And they're like, oh, my God, I've just been standing here doing nothing. <laughs> you know, it's such a simple thing. But that was ha- what we call hazing. It's a bit of a joke. Yeah, I know, can't, but you can't realistically, do that, realistically that, that person could sue because Oh, of ne- that. now, now they can't. Like now, even, now, even, now. even years ago they could as well, but now people will because, again, and I always say, if you want to know what your rights are, go on to citizensinformation.ie. Yeah. It will tell you everything. And I think over COVID and the pandemic, a lot of people got to see what rights they have, which they would not have known beforehand. And now they're coming back into the workplace saying, I am entitled to this, 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 this. Yeah, and there Here's will be more I, of that now. Very much so. But, but the bullying and harassment one is one of my, it's 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 dangerous because now if you say the right, like even me as a consultant, I have to be so careful with how I address people, how I speak, you know, especially when I'm dealing with different cultures or different languages, mm-hmm. I have to be respectful to that. And, yeah, but look, in that case, in that case, essentially, it could either go where if you say you sat them down, you've done everything. If you didn't sit them down and do something about it. And again, it depends on the claim and I'm not saying you would, but you would be slightly responsible for not trying to resolve the conflict. Um, if he put in a case for the bullying harassment, that I think would be a civil, a civil case. But I'll give you a good example. I had a client been working with him for four years. He hired a new manager. I mean, I haven't had to deal. He's been on retainer with me for four years. I think I've had to deal with him twice. This new manager came in. Within three months, I was in every second week. Why? Because the way he was speaking to the staff. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, and the staff were getting really, really upset. And I kind of said to myself, okay, maybe he's, you know, I'll meet him. Met him the first time, thought, okay, you know what? He's not as bad. I just said, told him, listen, just be aware of how you're saying. Don't undermine them. Just speak to them a bit nicer. Like, they're they're doing the work. Um, and I told him, here, listen, you have to follow these procedures for HR. This is what I'm hired for. Follow these procedures and you'll be fine. And essentially then, he wanted to do, he wanted to fire someone. But he had no justification. He just didn't like him as a person. You so you can't do that. So I asked him, I said, will you do me a favour and write up where he's going wrong? Now, he wrote me up an essay. I mean, an absolute essay on this guy and how poor quality his work was. So I said, okay, fair enough. So I said, let's do a performance review with this gentleman. We'll bring him in. So that was all fine. Then my client had asked for the manager not to be there in the performance review because he wanted to kind of get the employee's side without the intimidation of the manager and kind of get his view. Oh, that did not go down well. The manager got up and when I've never been spoken to like this before, he started screaming and shouting at me, insulting me, telling me that I was only a small little girl and he, had, she, I had no rights and you don't know what you're talking about and I'm the man here and all. And it was just this ignorant. And he actually got like he's a six foot five guy and he got up off his chair with these big arms, like basically screaming at me. 
And then my client tried to stop it and he put his hand up to my face and said, she's not going to get away with this and I won't deal with her. And I, I basically was just started laughing. And he said, what, what are you laughing? I said, I'm going to sue you right now. And he said, what? I said, no. I'm going to sue you for harassment, for violent behaviour, um, and I'm going to put in a civil claim against you. I am the HR manager for this company. You're nothing. I said, so this is what I can do to you. And could you imagine how you're going to speak to your other staff? And he said, well, let's let, let's let, I can't say my client's name, let, let's him decide. And my client said, I've had no problems for four years. She's been with me. Um, she's the HR manager. She's, she's trying to tell you not to teach, treat people like this and this is how you speak to her. <laughs> <laughs> so what what do you want me to do? Uh, he, he was like, I got you in to tell you how to speak to the staff and under the right way. And you're screaming and shouting and you're basically like it was it was so aggressive. I'm presuming he was fired. After uh, that. He was he he all my client was said, I choose Laura and he got up off the chair and and he left now. And that wasn't fair because then my client was left without a manager and he was a great manager. But he kind of had to decide what do I want? Do I want all the hassle for all my staff giving out or do I want a good manager? And he went away. I didn't, listen, that was a very specific situation. But at that time, he spoke to me so badly. I would never actually have sued him. Like, come on, I wouldn't have done that. But I wanted him to realise that that... You have the power to. That I could. And it's not going to be to do with my client. It's a civil case. You are treating me very badly. So Mm. let's go. Yeah. You know? Do you know what I think? I'm telling you something outside of the box, what I was thinking. I have so many different ideas in my head. And I think that the government should be responsible... Let's say let's say you decide to oh no, let's say I decide to open a business tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's gonna be in construction. Let's say something like paving or landscaping, yeah. right? I think that you know because generally speaking, all you need is a CRO number, your VAT number, and you off you go, you're on your own. Mm-hmm. But this is like like you know, raising a child and just let off you go, you know, without raising them, just letting them out. I think that the government should be responsible here. In a way that you have to take a HR course, you have to take a health and safety course, sign it up and then off you go. Shouldn't that be the case? I can't understand why it's not like that. Why is and it not like it, that? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, because I tell you, I would love. When I was starting, the, nobody was telling me. Oh, even when there I was... There was no yeah, podcast was, where I could learn. Way, even when I was starting um, doing my HR and stuff, I had no idea the stuff yet. I didn't even know what a safety statement was. And yeah. I mean, I, I was running a pub for years. Yeah. And I said oh my God, we've been liable for 10 years and I never knew because no one told me that I was supposed to do these yeah. things. It was kind of very similar to if you're coming out of school. You know, what I can't, fa- what I can't fathom is how a, a, a young person coming out of school now doesn't have a CV and doesn't have interview skills and doesn't have the basics of they want to go and do an nothing, apprenticeship. Nothing. Okay, well, we'll go get you your safe pass. We'll get you your man... Like, you know, every sixth year student, they do it in transition, but every sixth year student should be walking out with a manual handling cert. You know, if they're going into hospitality, their food safety certs, whatever they need. And it should be in the curriculum. I can't understand why I, it drives me mad. Look, I was joking the other day, Lucas, for president, I posted on my TikTok. But I think if anybody actually let me there and make a couple of decisions, I think I would actually do good because those things are pure logic. Yeah, yeah. You and can't I, it, let yeah. somebody go and open. A, you shouldn't let somebody go and open a roofing business until they do a couple of courses. Mm-hmm. And the courses should be not online, and not it should be not on the website. Yes, I agree. And I'll online. give you. I'll give you. I'll give you a good example. People are not gonna go on a citizen's information and read shit. They won't. No, yeah. Because they, they usually they, the only thing they read is a domestic label on the back. You know what I mean, when they're having a pony, that's what they read. Majority of people yeah. do. They don't read. Exactly. And I suppose I was a very young, I was very young going into starting my own business. And on, honestly, if I had not been introduced to a networking group called Business Networking Ireland, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be an entrepreneur today. Um, B, What's it called? It's called BNI, Network? Business Networking Ireland. Um, I and. and even to this day, I'm in a three years, I'm the president of a chapter. I'd say 85 to 90% of my business comes from this networking group. They taught me. I was it Basically, I was in a room with 30 other business people, all way older than me, all in different industries from insurance to mortgages to you know printing to graphic design. And I kind of went in as a visitor one day, totally clueless of how to run a business. And I said, hey... Maybe these guys can advise me and help me. And I got a lot of life life lessons off them. There you go. The listeners should and elaborate. They should learn was, from you. Yeah, it was like, and I said to him, I said, 
I, and the one thing is that I don't have an ego. When I meet anyone, even if I go into a client now and they're well more experienced than I am, I utilize that. And I say, hey, I, I'm a specialist in this, but what do you know? Because I want to learn something with everything that I do. Mm. And like that, you never stop growing as mm-hmm. a business person. Um, and brilliant, if you, if brilliant. You, I love what you're saying yeah. here. Because people think that they can open a business and they can just provide value, but it's no, business. It's all it's, about growing. Yeah. And people think that, you know, this is the biggest myth in the world. People think that when they finish school, that's it. My learning is dull. No, no. You that's never, what, if, if that's you ever when stop, learning yeah, should yeah, start. Yeah, you yeah. Know? If, you ever stu- if you ever think you've learned everything, you're never going to succeed. Yeah. And I think, you know what the problem is? The problem is with people who actually finish college. Because these people think that they're smart. I knew that I was mm-hmm. stupid. I genuinely <laughs> told myself, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking... S- I'm, I'm not. I'm not an ap- academic at all. Yeah. But I am smarter than most people yeah. in situations. But look, as soon as you assume that you're stupid, you chase knowledge. Yeah. But yeah. the moment you assume, oh, sure, I finished college. I don't need this shite book. And it, it's, <laughs> That's and, by the way, and it's the people who think they know everything that cause the most problems. Yeah. Or they're the worst kind yeah. of leaders. Yeah. And I, you know, I always say there's a difference between a manager and a leader. You know. Oh yeah. Um, and a lot of people who think they're leaders are actually they wouldn't even I wouldn't even call them a supervisor because they're just so arrogant about mm-hmm. what they know and they won't listen to anyone else's opinions and naturally they just fade out but everyone else is still there and they never learn from it so it's going to be a continuous cycle where no matter what company they go into and then they ask why am I why can't I get a long term job it's because you're not learning you're yeah, you're yeah. just too. I, I think I think this might be the reason why there's not a lot of business people out there. You know, like it, it's it's probably the how many I don't know the exact percentage, but let's say there's about ten percent of people who employ the ninety percent of the world. Yeah, wouldn't it be like that? And I think that the main reason is that, you know, let's say somebody opens a business. Look, we today just cover the HR and health and safety in a very mm. small fraction of what's yeah. actually out there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the moment somebody opens a business, they have to become their marketing. They have to become the salesman because some has to bring the job then they have to do the work then they have to know hr then they have to know this and then they have to know health and safety then they have to be good at what they do and look how many and they have to have time management organization passion and, and the funny know. thing is that every one of them is a job in itself exactly so you have to learn mm-hmm. all that shit before you start yeah <laughs> and you know what's funny about start when i like you're saying about entrepreneurs i know we're going a bit off topic of health and safety but ah, it's fine um you know i have always been in an entrepreneur family mm-hmm. uh you know Especially like my father, when when I was younger, God, he just had a knack for business. And I used to just be so impressed where he'd see an opportunity. And like so, same, my, like my mum was great at business as well. Like she started her own kind of um, hypnotherapy business. And, you know, all of my... Hypnotherapy? Can I talk to you later yeah, about this? Yeah, yeah. Um, and like my brother Mark, for example, I'm going to brag about him for a minute. Like he's written three books, travelled to 130 countries or something around the world. And we've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm-hmm. When I started my own company, I thought this is going to be easy because I know how it works. Oh, my God, did I get a wake up call? And like mm-hmm. that, it was just you're ne- you never switch off. First of all, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, they work nine to five when you run your own business. <laughs> nine to five. You're, yeah, you're 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah, you know, and you'll at get, least. Yeah, you get an idea at two o'clock in the morning. Go, oh, better write that down because I'm going to do that. Um, and I actually also one thing to give recognition where. Keep it up, my sorry, when when if you're starting your own business. Um, and you think, oh, a lot of people say I have no skills. And when I do my coaching or I, I go to if I'm trying to put to someone like a health and safety man who won't listen, I say, OK, do you have children? And they'll say yes. And I say, OK, so when your children are 18 or 20, are you going to let it, and you wanted them to work here? Yeah, it'd be great. OK, so would you put them in an environment where they could have an accident or hurt themselves or be paralyzed or in any way? Any? No, I would never do that. I said, so why are you putting your employees in that position? their parents as well and they kind of stop and think oh I was like think about health and safety as if you're the safety of your child you will do everything to keep them safe brilliant so why not look at your business the same way and also parents the amount of skills they have you'll always hear like I've I had you know mothers coming out of retirement or saying oh I've absolutely no skills and I said you've more skills than anyone you're a parent. You've got organisation, time management, crisis management. You know, you've got um, communication. Yeah, those skills just need to be transferred. It's there, and it's your life skills are your job skills as well. So anyone who wants to start their own business, think about who you are as a person and what you've done and their skills. And they can be utilised, mm-hmm. you know. 
Have you ever walked into a site as a health and safety inspector and you've seen some completely incompetent people in the wrong position where they should have been? Probably came through an agency, you know. Have you seen something oh, like that? Oh, I have had, <laughs> like you said, come, not, not necessarily coming from an agency, well, from an agency, but or else they might be coming from a different area or and they'll say, they'll say, oh, we have all these qualifications. I mean, I had one guy who didn't even know how to use a hammer. Really? I'm not even joking you, like a, a basic hammer. And I saw him and he had, you know, where the the back of it with the yeah, two little, yeah. what I call them, the little horns. <laughs> um, basically, he was holding that with his full and, and hammering it down. No. And, and I went up and I said, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I, I, mean, I said, have you ever used a hammer before? And he goes, yeah. I said, no, really, honestly. I said, what was your job previous to this? And he said, oh, I was a taxi driver. And I said, Okay, I said, do you know how to use like a drill gun? And do you know, and I actually ended up having to show him how to use a hammer, a nail gun, even a screwdriver. He was trying to put in his keys to, to take screws out. And was that just, on the site? Just, that was on, oh, and on, a, on one of the big sites, you know. Um, how are they getting away with hiring people like that? No wonder uh, there's mistakes. Well, and, there's, this, and, and this is where. I, this is where you need someone like myself to do their due diligence and kind no, of say... I had this conversation with some fan, uh, with some man on a TikTok, you know, he said, ah, oh, blah, 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 mistakes, this, mistakes, that. And I said, man, do you know what's the biggest reason for that, uh, for that and uh, accidents on sites? It's, I used a bad language, but here I'm going to use a good language. And I said, Ooh, com- incompetent people. Incompetent people. Yeah, incompetent, people. incompetent people. And by the way, yeah, a lot of the time, it, it, the, the one thing I always say is don't assume anybody has common sense because they don't they don't so many people have no common sense like even the simplest I'll tell you uh, actually you'll enjoy this story so we're in um, a canteen and there's a plug socket there and it has a big piece of masking tape over it with an X okay you would think automatically let's not use that machine not only did they use the machine, the, the socket, but there was also like, um, I suppose, a shelf that had stuff that wasn't working. Very clearly, do not use. It was busy. I think she wanted her slice of toast very quickly. It was only on a 15 minute break. So I, I watched the whole thing, proceeded, went over, got a toaster, which had again a big sign, do not use. Took the masking tape off the socket, plugged it in, got an electric shock and was shocked as to why. And I went to, I said, I said, what do you expect? I said, there was a marking tape with an X and it says do not use. And you put the two of them together and you you want to get a claim because you got an electric shock. And she put, she oh, put she a claim in? That was the whole thing. She put in a claim to say it wasn't no her fault. No way, some neck. And it's like people just don't even think, you know. Um, and that, that, that's, this is what I said about mm-hmm. the religion. People just think that they'll yeah. get away oh, because yeah. there is some horror stories there for is. employers. And actually, I'll give you a little horror stories that something that a lot of employees might not know as well. If you have a medical condition or any sort of illness, especially if it comes to blood, you are obligated to inform your employers of this. Um, okay, so not only HIV and AIDS, but also the related. Yeah, stuff. like say for example, if you're you have a certain condition and you're taking medication, and you might it says you might get drowsy, drowsy. And I know a lot of tablets will say, "Don't operate heavy machinery," and you'll be fine. But if you're on medication that it says don't do that, you're obliged to tell your employer because then at least we'll know and kind of say, "Well, we can we can keep an eye on that employee to make sure." Mm-hmm. We had a chef. This wasn't it. This was actually in America um, when I lived there. And essentially, long story short, they cut their finger in they, the kitchen. As in, a the, chef. in the kitchen as a chef, and they were screaming the whole time, not about their finger. They were like, "Please make sure no one touches my blood. Make sure no one touches my blood, and don't go near that station." Some girl obviously didn't hear the cleaning woman. Didn't wear gloves. Had a cut on her hand, and she contracted um, HIV from it. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, Simplicity. Wow. And that guy was legally obliged to tell the employer. And you're a chef. It's not as if you're not going to cut yourself. Um, and yeah, I think I think that went into a civil claim later on. But like, that's the simplicity as well. People don't think you can actually, you're, you're, you're messing up someone's life here. Mm. Even I had one instance where the, a supervisor wanted, again, kind of, it's always usually on a Friday when people want to go home early and they had to change a light bulb. Very simple thing, right? But in the area, there was a manhole. 
Mm-hmm. So the empl- the supervisor said, okay, what I'll do is I'll cover the manhole. But he covered it with, you know, like plastic sheeting or lilo that you put on a, on a floor. Oh, just yeah, the protective just, stuff. Yeah, you know, just, just nothing. No, no wood, no nothing. This will be fine. Throws a ladder on top of it <laughs> and uh, doesn't even go up himself. He gets one of the employees to go up. 19 year old kid gets up on the ladder like he's any and he didn't even say don't move the ladder he didn't know so he moves the ladder he steps up the thing goes down and breaks his two legs two legs two legs two legs and he didn't walk he didn't walk for nearly a year um and like that like that employee now was off for the year physiotherapy everything regardless of the money that supervisor put that guy's life in jeopardy because he wanted to go home <clears throat> and it's the irresponsibility of rushing a job that most of the accidents actually happen mm-hmm that's true. Yeah. Every time I've seen an accident, it's always because the jobs are rushed or rushed, on a low yeah. low budget. Low budget or rushed, yeah. Low budget or rushed. I've yeah. seen a lot of stuff myself before before I had my own business. But, well, I didn't see a lot. I've seen some. But even the simplicity of ho- and health, home life. So of what? My home life and health oh, and safety. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very simple. Thing. Like my family and family call me Sergeant Safety. It's just like, <laughs> like oh, Sergeant and Safety's on her way. Because <laughs> I always find something with everything. Um, and a lot of the times they slag me. But if there's something that comes up but they're unsure, they'll, I'll always get that call from a family member. And even the simplicity, I'm going to ask a question to everyone out here now. Um, have you, do you know, do you have a first aid box in your own home? Do I have a mm-hmm. first aid box? No, I don't. Why wouldn't you have a first aid box in your own home? Oh, because I'm just, I'm like a Vladimir Putin yeah. in mind. I don't. No, but it's something. Uh, if I, if I yeah. put my finger, I just bite it off. Well, so and, I mean. and this is the thing. A lot of the time, people in their own homes won't think about uh, this. No, well, good one. Yeah, no, I should have one there. Yeah, because yeah. Look, my, look, girlfriend is, uh, especially I have tenants as well. So yeah, so yeah. Should, that should be. Yeah. Uh, first aid. And even in simplicity, I, <laughs> I'll be slagged for this, but fire evacuations. Mm-hmm. I... I used to say to the guys, how how do we get out in a fire? Ah, Lord, it's never going to happen. I said, well, we're on a two story building, mom and dad. If it, if it ever was mm. downstairs, how are you guys going to get out? There's mm. no access. So I said, is it OK if I just put a ladder, like one of those fold up ladders in your room because they have a balcony? I said, so mm. if there's ever a fire, at least you can put the ladder down. And it, from my head now, I knew my family were safe if there's ever a fire in the house. You know? And I suppose people don't think about it, but what's going to happen? Everyone's going to panic. But if you have a conversation about it as a family and say, guys, just in case there's ever a fire, here's the plan. Yeah. And it's just Funny you small should say that. My, actually, my house actually went on fire. Full house burned down. Too. Yeah. yeah. My house, when I was a, k- a kid in Poland. Actually, it was a couple of days before Christmas full house went on fire yeah? no oh, procedures no scary. nothing and that was an old German house as well so it was all like straw and, well it wasn't a straw but it was all like old wood and shit like that it was just went on fire like a like a match <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh um, that must have been scary yeah very scary yeah yeah <laughs> Very scary. I'm very homeless after that. <laughs> I shouldn't be giggling. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look, no. I take it as a joke at this stage, you know. Yeah, well, f- fire is is one of my biggest fears <clears throat> now, um, yeah. and it's it's something people are are very silly about. Even laptop chargers and mm. keeping stuff on overnight, and mm. not just not thinking about the wattage that's going through. And in terms of uh, health and safety in companies, I have a question for you. Maybe mm-hmm. there is an answer. Maybe there is not. But I just uh, I noticed something, and I have to ask you, right? Pharmaceutical companies and hospitals. Why is the health and safety always about 10 times diffi- more difficult in those places than anywhere else? Well, actually, funny that I, st- I, it's the one area that I tend not to do is pharmaceuticals because of, well, I was working for a pharmaceutical company that repackaged pills. Mm-hmm. So they would get the pills in, they'd have to put the English labels on. Mm-hmm. And the sheer liability that they are under is astronomical. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have my own theory, but I, I'm not sure if I'm right. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Um, my opinion is because essentially it's medical conditions are, are so uncontrollable um, and you give someone the wrong advice or you give them the wrong medication or you're, you're putting their lives in jeopardy. Okay, someone has an accident and you're worrying about their health and safety. But if you have a patient in front of you, like they even have a thing called patient handling training. Of mm. Yeah, so you have your manual handling, but anyone who deals with patients like physiotherapists, chiropractors, like chiropractors, the liability for them is unbelievable. Really? Yeah, well, if they mess your spine up and they don't fix it, of course you could say it was their fault. Mm. You know, that's why there's always Jesus these waivers Christ, yeah. that are there. Physiotherapists are the same. The liability is 
huge for them because they're trying to they give you advice but if you don't take it or if you hurt yourself you could easily say well you gave me the wrong exercise where is the proof mm-hmm. you know um, and it's not like you can record it no right? it's not as if you can record it either you know it, it's it, there's a lot even I that's why sometimes we, even with manual handling I get nervous because someone could come back to me in 10 years time and say mm. you never gave me the right now I know it's every three years but you know that kind of way like <clears throat> if they're not lifting properly and they hurt their back that's on me because mm. I train them mm. so in terms of the, the, I don't really know the answer, but the pharmaceutical, because they're going to the public and if they give the wrong medication or something goes I'll wrong, t- someone you, could I'll die. I'll tell you my take on it. My take on it, because we do work for a lot of pharmaceutical companies. In fact, we work for the biggest ones out there because we have all the health and safety and we actually, we have our pride in it. We're the guys, right? So we do work for a lot of them. And what I've noticed is that usually the companies with the biggest health and safety protocols are American companies. They operate in Ireland. Even yeah. even if the company is Irish, it has been bought by American company, and there's one very specific person at the top who's looking after the health and safety. And they don't implement our rules, but they implement their rules in combine with our rules. Exactly. And honestly, I love it. It is. I I yeah. actually prefer working. No, it's the dip. I'm not going to say the site that I, I've worked on a few big sites. Yeah. Um and. Because it's America, for example, I had an accident. In America, was it? Yeah, it wasn't in America. It was not very similar. Irish company, American company working in, in Ireland. And mm-hmm. we we had, a, someone had a small, very minor accident. They, they hurt their finger. So we went to the to the doctors that are, that were on site. The next day I got a call to say, by the way, why would you go? There's, there's another doctor you could have went to. Because that went into the global stats now. So the worldwide stats puts them down. Because that one small fit, and it wasn't even an accident, it was more of an incident, but they're so specific on health and safety Mm. to avoid Mm -hmm. claims Mm -hmm. that the responsibility goes on Mm -hmm. everybody else, but they have such a good structure in place. That's it. That you cannot fault it. You cannot fault it. It's perfect. It's actually perfect. I'll tell you one story that I've been been on a site. It was a big pharmaceutical company here in Ireland. And they had this girl in charge of all the health and safety, right? She was a... Uh, who was she? I can't remember as well. But um, I, I've heard stories. Look, everybody who goes to that job, they have to triple their price. If if they don't, they're going to lose their money. Yep. And uh, the girl, she would be so outrageously precise about her job. I've seen this on my own, with my own eyes. There was a truck driver coming in through the gates. And her job is to inspect the truck and everything that's in it. Mm-hmm. And the truck had a first aid. And in the first aid, in the toolbox, there was a torch light. And the batteries in it were gone. And she didn't let them onto site. Yeah, that would be a standard thing that I would do as well. Um, if you don't... Yeah, have, I know, but yeah. the, 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 the but guy it's, no, it's, it's speci- no, that's That's very specific. Very specific. Know. And look, I heard the story from a guy who was in the car park. He was a friend with the trucker. And the trucker couldn't believe he wasn't let in. Mm-hmm. And actually... That is one thing I kind of slightly, I love, I love my job and I love being a health and safety officer. But sometimes I know it's so over the top and it's so unrealistic. But we've covered why, we've covered you why. Know, but it's because of all the people who are not competent and they break breaking their legs and, yeah, and then they're suing. And then, because yeah. guess, look, guess what? There is no such a thing in Poland. There is no such a thing in Slovakia. There is no such a thing in Czech Republic. Oh, talk about Malta. Uh, sorry, and the reason I'm talking, my parents live in Malta at the moment with my, with my two brothers and yeah. they run three bars there. I can't go over to Malta anymore because the health and safety is so non-existent. It gives me, heart, like it, it literally, it makes me so nervous. Yeah. Like you'd have guys on, I was sunbathing one day and I had, there were six guys on a seven story building in the flip flops, you know, hanging out of the wall. And I'm like, but the problem with those, I'm not saying, well, actually, you know, the biggest problem with countries are doing that is the employees are the ones that suffer. Mm-hmm. And when they have an incident, sure, it doesn't matter. We'll see you later. And a lot of the times when it comes to certain countries with visas, they're there illegally. So they get treated so badly. Those and then do, yeah. when they have an accident, they does, don't the, does the employer care? No. They don't exist. I heard of a story of some guy being literally thrown in front of a hospital after having a severe accident on one of the sites and the employer just literally rolled him out and drove off. And that person was just left on the floor after having an accident. Where was that? In that was in Malta. No way. Yeah. So, it's, you know, we're actually one the Ireland is probably the strictest health and safety in the whole of Europe. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason for it. 
uh, and it works. Mm. You know, I tell you a story because when the COVID kicked in, a lot of the yeah, health and safety inspectors <laughs> who are it, look, you're a health and safety inspector, but I'm talking about the one who actually work for HSE and they go and they go look at people. So that wouldn't be your part of the job, you know. So we were in the same week. We were uh, caught by uh, w- two people in one week. That would never happen because you never have those inspections. Mm-hmm. But it just so happened. I don't know Murphy's law or whatever. And um, we were doing some job and they came in, they closed it off, blah, blah, blah. And it was a two small jobs. We were doing a couple of hundred quid, small profit, two guys just cleaning a gutter or something, you know. And they closed us off and we had two big cases, you know. But thanks to that, I say thanks to that because you know what? Thanks to that, I, w- I had to up my game. You know, also I had a, as well, asbestos company who was uh, quite, uh, calling the health and safety on me because they didn't like the service that I was doing because it was threatening them. So I know for the fact that it was them calling That happens me. a lot, yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah, but thanks to them, I upped my game by a hundred times because because of them, in this office, I had a people from the health and safety, too big, 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 like big, and then the guy even had a lady with him just to have a witness and everything mm-hmm. was a big issue, you know? So we had them in here, but they did nothing but educate me. They were so nice. To me. By the way, and this is what I always say about the HSE and the HSA. Like, I work. I, I I I've talked about construction a lot, but what the other element, my 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 actual main area, and there's not many of us, is I actually specialize in opening food systems. Oh, so oh. my speciality is restaurants, cafes. Like I do my construction, but I mean I I help. If you want to set up a food That's truck, that's handy to know. So, uh, if, yeah. guys, if anybody wants to set up a food business and you don't oh, know where to go, yeah. If you have if you have a van and you want to sell coffees out of it, I can set it up for you. So, I I help people. Like, I I helped a butcher. I helped a guy who sells. He has a farm and he's got twenty cows. His butcher aviary got shut down. So, I went down, assessed his house, and we. We, we basically turned his house into a full new food production who saved a fortune or I had another guy who wanted to do meals at an electric picnic from a, vo- a food truck that he's had sitting there for 10 years. We revamped it, got the health, um, HSE over, set him all up and he was able to open. So um, like that's what I look like. I, I, you know, I've been in, ca- you said about stories, I always go to construction. I'll tell you stories of walking into restaurants uh, they're getting complaints of food poisoning and then I look and I see and I'll open up a fridge and there'll be mouldy food, there'll be no labels. I even had a situation where I went into a place and there was five dehydrated rats in their property. But is there nobody who goes around and checks those places? The or health, they only the, check them the, when, they, when shit what, is the Yeah, fun? environment health officer is inspects your premises once a year. Same time every year. They will, if there's something wrong, they will give you what they call an improvement notice. That's where I get most of my calls. A lot of times it's chippers, takeaways, um, in you know cafes saying, okay, we've got the health inspector in, here's what we need to improve. I go in, get them set up, make sure that they're okay. Or else I get, okay, we're being shut down um, because we're so unclean. And I have, again, through my B&I, I have a person for everyone. So we were all work together and I can just make sure within two or three days, They've got the cleaners in, they've got their new insurance, they've got everything up to date and then they can open up their restaurant again within two or three days. Same with hotels as well. I deal specifically a lot with hotels in terms of, um, you know, (sighs) room cleanliness, like if they have a case of we've got bed bugs, well, you have to investigate why you're getting that and you have to put in a report and you have to get a fumigation company, but that all has to be logged and that has to be sent in to the HSA as a record mm. so a lot of that yeah um, sure, but, say it keeps a record of everything but, uh, yeah and, but in fairness like you said any time I've had to deal with them or an environment health officer or anyone who comes onto a site they won't penalise you if you have <coughs> a reasonable background of doing something if you have nothing they have every right to penalise you and they'll make your life a living hell mm. because you were so ignorant to what you should have mm. um, if you have some even the basics done, they're going to help you. Do you think you should have an online course or a course for people who start in a business, a start of course? Because you have do a you know lot of business funny? knowledge. Do you, know, do you know what's funny? Now, that even with this podcast, I'm like, it was something that I kind of had all, I, I do a, what I call a... You do personal coaching, but I think there's... Yeah, I do, I do an you entrepreneurial should, should, co- course. You should, you, so should, I should. you should sell it to masses, I think, because everybody... I could even give you hundreds of clients every every month because people ask me questions and I can't answer them because I have eight Instagrams, I have an, uh, 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 11 TikToks and mm. I have seven Facebook accounts and then I have a personal account. But all you, the messages, you, you, I can't yeah, answer and them And also, you, you 
you said it to me very simply when we first met when I was just giving you simple examples of the posture and how to sit and mm. you said why don't you have it and I, I have no social media because I'm lucky with my networking group and with everything that I have enough business coming in but I thought it never harms to have more or to, yeah. to market yourself. Or look, the way I look at it, I have it with people. I tell them to market themselves on TikTok and they tell me, ah, oh, we've plenty of work. And then I tell them 80-20. I told you the 80-20. Yeah, like, exactly, exactly. 80-20, so stop, and, and stop doing it's, stuff it's that doesn't make It's just the simplicity money. of educating people more so than anyone. Um, yeah. It's just, just uh, let them know. Look, I, I just think that sh- everybody who starts a business, look, have you have no idea how many young guys they want to do it, but they have no direction. They don't know how. They need somebody to tell them about health and safety, how to start it, a bit of entrepreneurial stuff, a bit of I'm, I'm planning to do it myself but mm. I think you should have your own <laughs> no well yeah I never really kind of thought of it that way you know, you like know a, what like I mean a, like a simple uh, like a one day online course you know basics a, a, of a, a, yeah, 80 yeah. euro how to start a business with this and this and this something that is on point because the problem with the citizens information you can get all that stuff there it's fine but it's not written mm-hmm. in a simple man's sure. language and I think even when I'm doing my the reason I started kind of my career coaching um, and I get a variety of people, like from young students to people, like just everyone that I can get. Like I've had, you know, guys coming out of retirement or trying to get back into work or trying to leave a job and start their own business. And I have young teenagers kind of saying, what will I do? And my first thing is I always kind of management, I always give them the basics of starting their own business and why if you can do this, you can work for anyone. And, you know, I think in order to be a successful person, whether you're working for somebody else or not, is you have to know who you are and you don't have to particularly like yourself. You know, I have a ridiculous amount of flaws, but I've turned them into strengths. Mm, You know, um, Mm -hmm. I, I am a control freak. I'm obsessive. I can be, sorry for your boyfriend. You know, yeah, well, he, (laughs) (laughs) he, 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 I, 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 I hopefully he'll still love me, but, but, but like that, I, I, I've learned that that is a flaw of mine and Mm -hmm. I used to actually annoy people over it. So I know now to hone that back, but turned it into a business opportunity to say, well, where do these talents work and that's why I kind of went into health and safety and Mm. HR because yeah as I said like I'm hired to be I'm not a bitch and well no actually I kind of can be a a, you know look health and safety officer has to be a bit of a bitch yeah especially because look look I'm not trying to be sexist here but a female going into a construction site you might be. have a 3,000 guys who think that they're no better. Which, in fact, when it comes to putting shit together, they might. But when it comes to health and safety, they don't. They don't and you yeah. are the person. Yeah. So, you know, you have to have a bit of a bitch face on it. You know what well, I mean? and this is it. Like, I, I, I always it. put it down to this. Um, every company that I've been in or every people that I've... I mean, I've had a hundred guys that didn't even speak a word of English. And it was just me and my translator. And I'm teaching them how to do things. And the first thing I say to everyone is, I am here for you. I'm Yes, I'm there for my employer, but health health and safety comes down to you guys as employees. Mm -hmm. I'm here to make sure you're safe. If you're not, we're going to have problems. I will always be fair and I always always smile. And I always give people, unless it's something very serious, I'll Mm -hmm. give them three chances. So my joke is, I will smile all day. The day you turn this smile off my face, you're going to know all about it. Mm. And don't, don't disappoint, just don't make that happen. Because if you do, I don't want to turn into that person because I will do everything to make sure I don't. Mm. But if you cross the line mm. or if you turn me in, you're, you're just, there's no going back from yeah. that. Give us a, before we wrap up, because I think we covered a lot of stuff. We've been at it for about one and a half hour nearly, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, give us uh, some of the undercover stories. I love them. I love the undercover stories, you know. Oh, I so, love, yeah. So when people hire you to be undercover in their company, so you can sp- you can spy mm. on the employees. Because this is, this is cool. I've never heard I, of stuff Oh, like that. I, I, and it was, it's funny, it's, it's it's it, it. I don't know how I got into it. It actually, when I came back from America, I used to, it was kind of the idea. I didn't do many of them, but the ones that I did were great. And also, my my dad in the hospitality industry had a lot of uh, connections, so he kind of was able to get me into a lot mm-hmm. of places, which was again the look of the draw. I mean, I had one company, and they were they were high end wine. You know, selling a lot of high price wine <clears throat> and so much profit. in Oh, uh, ridiculous. But, you know, what the employees were <laughs> <What>? <laughs> there was a wine case. And again, comes down to cameras not being angled. So essentially they were they were getting the cheap wine. 
um, putting that into the expensive bottles and then they were taking the expensive bottles home and and there's some sort of yeah yeah now it, it, and this how is, expensive was the wine? oh like the 800 euro bottle what yeah and even with whiskies a lot we I used to work in a in a company that had done a a whiskey bar and I mean you'd you'd spend 300 quid on one shot of whiskey and like that they were basically putting water in them or they were drowning them down and now uh, if you're spending 300 quid in a whiskey you think you'd know if it's going to taste right or not but a lot of the times it comes down to what I call um, perception rather than the you know people want Mm -hmm. to be able to say hey I have money I'm going to spend this money on a bottle of wine but half the time they haven't got a clue what they're drinking yeah people slack me on the podcast from drinking proper 12 and I said guys I'm not a whiskey specialist and I'm not fucking stupid I wouldn't pay a thousand euro for a bottle of whiskey neither would I (laughs) neither would never never even if I had all the money by the way even if I had like Jemison proper 12 they're perfect like why would you you know I drink proper 12 because it's McGregor's that's why I do it well well, I'm I'm a Jemison drinker because I just love the taste do you know what I mean nothing else like and that's why when you said that, that that's just what that's just my drink um i like you <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know my I, type I, of yeah, yeah. Um, the undercover stories they're the best you know what i mean i love the one with the where the guy told you how he took out a lot of money from the company that was a gold one you know was, i'd say that the employer was like oh my god thank they, you oh, Laura. yeah they lo- there was it was and, and, and actually it's something that i'd love to go back to because i suppose i do it with my site inspections, trying to catch, not catch people drinking or, you know, I go on site at three o'clock in the morning because they're having issues with people drinking. Um, one client that I had, the two supervisors I had caught and not even drinking, but they were hammered, hammered on site. Like proper hammered. No, like literally. Okay, so I had, I literally saw them in the bar I arrived at like nine o'clock just because I stayed over in the hotel because it was outside of Dublin and I wasn't on site till two o'clock. So my clients, they part of it is they pay for my hotel and my travel. So it works out. And I saw them in the bar at nine o'clock and I was like, OK, they've had three points, four points. OK, so 10 o'clock they were supposed to do work. I had presumed. You've seen them in the pub. I saw them in the in the hotel bar drinking I didn't even because I didn't want them to know I was going yeah. to be on so I didn't yeah. I, I was in the background and I just presumed because they were wearing their uniforms that they had been working all day and they weren't on site at 10 o'clock so I arrive on site at 1am and they're there and who's there and I just this is where a moment of, oh my God, what do I do here? Because technically I should fire these guys on the spot. But I also knew that they were two husbands with kids at home. Mm. And... Mm. So, health and safety inspectors do have a soul. Yeah, I, 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 ha- I have a soul. <laughs> a- and, and like that, I said, okay, I don't want these guys to get sacked. I just want them to get a bit of cop on. So, I... Worked on site and ever, of course, knew they were drunk and they were kind of expecting to see what I would do about it. And they thought it was going to be this big drama. And I saw them. I completely ignored them. Went around, done my whole inspection, done everything. Mm -hmm. As I was leaving, I said, "Okay, guys, can you guys come outside for a second? And I said, go home, go back to the hotel, sober up. Um, I'm going to meet you in the morning. We'll have a meeting around eight o'clock and we'll decide what we're going to do. And they said, we're not fired. I said... We'll talk about it tomorrow and we'll see. I said, but just get off this site now. So I stayed on site for the rest of the day because they had no supervisors. It was grand. I stayed in the car. If anything went wrong, it was fine. Mm. So I gave them an ultimatum the next day. I said, listen, I have to report this. I'm going to report that you guys had one or two drinks. Um, Go get some help. Do what she's got to do. But if I catch his drinking again... um. I'm going to have to fire you, but please don't go home to your wife and say I got fired because I was drunk. Go home and, you know, like the, how embarrassed would you be and how, excuse me, pissed yeah, is your wife going to be? Geez. And it was only when I said it to them like that, I could see a light bulb in their head. You know, I said, guys, you're working from 10 p.m. till 7 a.m. every morning. You're three months away from your family at a time. I get that. But don't go home with no job because of alcohol. It's just not worth it. Mm. 
And I did, again, I used to only do sites maybe every two months because they would be on long contracts. Went up the next site at the same time and they both came up to me and they shook my hand and they said, thank you so much. Really? No, they shook my hand. And one guy actually was like, Laura, I didn't realise but I was an alcoholic and I know I'm in AA and thank you for saving my life. And no, I was like, like why? Oh, yeah, no, honestly, I, I, I actually even get emotional talking about it. But he was like, no one has ever spoke to me about it before the way you did. And he goes like, I didn't realise I had a problem mm. but until you asked me not to drink and I couldn't do it. And yeah. I didn't want to lose my job. So it thank you. It shows how good of a person you are because like, most of the people who are in this game, they would just sack them. They yeah, because they're, yeah, they wouldn't care. They wouldn't I, give I, a fuck. I care too much about yeah. the, the person who's that's doing it. That's what I like about you. Yeah. yeah. And I'll always give someone a chance, you mm. know, always. You know, don't bite the hand that feeds you. That's mm. that's the way I look at it. Mm. Um, and like that that was that was only that was about four years ago, and that's when I kind of learned I'm going to be good at this job because mm. I care. I care about people's lives. Yeah, not great. just following the law at the same time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is the funny thing about law, you know. That's a, I, I'm going to teach this in my business course whenever I do lounge one. I think, you know, in business and in making money world, you can do whatever the hell you want. Once you do it within Once you the, do in the legislation. Once you do it within the legal structures, you pay your taxes and you have the health and safety, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You, you can be ruthless. You can go and take somebody else's business down by opening next um, door to him. Oh, and... Be, no being a good entrepreneur is being ruthless, but you do it oh, in the right way. Like yeah. I, I have stepped on so many people's toes as a young girl getting business from lads who have been in the industry 20 years. And they're like, how did you get that job? And I said, yeah. you know why? Because I care and you're just in it for the money. I'm in it to help people. And there's a huge difference mm. in that. No, just okay. um, there's a huge difference mm. in, in that. And I suppose, I listen... I'm rambling now, but yeah, I, I, I am very, very, very strict and I am a ball buster, but mm. I'm also extremely fair on. Yeah, I'd say, you know, let, let's wrap it up. So, guys, I think whoever is watching this, if you have a business, regardless of if you think you should or not, you should hire this lady. I think, yeah. you know? Or even just honestly, most of the time, just give me a call for an advice. You know, um, I give a free half an hour consultation for oh, every. No yeah, way. yeah, free half. Call in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's 30 minute consultation. Um, it's uh, free guys, charge. Did you hear this? This is free. Like yeah, you can't go wrong with free. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at the end, they like I always say, like I'll end up. You'll probably need a manual handling cert in two years' time. You can pay me back then. Yeah, yeah that's how I would look. Everybody, at it. everybody should hire you. Everybody should hire you for HR or for the health and safety. Yeah. every business. Look, guys, I got Laura here in my office to have a look at the desks, at the everything, all the equipment. Then we're gonna look into other businesses. Every business should have it because this is for you. Because you know, it's all about the safety of the guys, but also make sure that when you're sued. You can be protected. Yeah, and also most of the time you won't get sued if you're protected. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We had we had a guy who uh, jumped out of a it was MEWP. He was two meters away above the ground, and he jumped out and he twisted his knee. Oh, to, to twisted his ankle, you know, and uh, he couldn't sue me. Well, he did, but it but was he can't. Yeah, you're, yeah. Most of the time they'll he always had, put in a claim, but they'll never he win. He had a harness. Yeah. He had everything. The train, and we gave them. They were coming back to us with this, with this. With everything was there. There was not one piece of paper wo- missing. Everything was there. And and that's 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 exactly what I'm there for mm. is to make sure that even even <laughs> just to if we're wrapping up the smallest thing of I'm a bit of a like I said a control perfectionist mm-hmm. and pre pandemic I had in all of my safety statements and stuff cuz living in America where there was hurricanes and this and you couldn't control anything excuse me I always put into my contracts and everything that as a business if unforeseen circumstances and I actually had viruses you know um, weather conditions happens we won't be able to employ you and you're basically going to be let go because we can't do it as a business at the time two of my clients three years ago said no we don't need that and I said trust me just keep it in they were like no take it out I said okay the pandemic happened and they said Oh, you and your due diligence, if we had that in, I was like, I would have covered you for COVID. I'm just saying <laughs> you wouldn't have had to put them on the wave subsidiary. You wouldn't have had to do any of that because you had. Yeah, you have to be specific. You have to be. Yeah, we we, we, we impl- implemented something similar into our warranties because every roof that we do, we actually give comprehensive 20 year warranty on paper. 
Nobody does that. Nobody in this country does that. They might do, but it's not covered by anything. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Our one is actually covered. But the way we say it in there as well is that we have to maintain the roof for 20 years. Mm-hmm. So they have to get me there once or twice a year, pay me a thousand quid to just jump on there. And but that's, that's a business. That's, that's business. You no, know? I, I learned yeah. it from uh, the, another company that does that and uh, it makes it, you know. Yeah. Mm. And also, like, what I do is like that because, you know, you have to do your... <laughs> Training every three years, and the reason in Ireland why you have to do it every three years is essentially because. Is it your training or what? Um, well, like just like manual handling, food oh, safety, yeah, yeah. fire, oh, safe, I was safe pass. About it. Why do you have so to? So why do why they do that is essentially that if you were to go and do a manual handling course ten years ago, old habits die hard. So at least if we know every three years you're being refreshed on this material, we've mm. done our job. You know, yeah. Do you know, uh, before I was detailed on the health and safety, I thought this was stupid. But yeah, now, yeah, I, now no, I think it's right. Yeah, I, and honestly, I, I used to think the same. you can't teach an old dog new tricks. No, you can't. You, you can't. can't. You can't. No, but what right. you can do is, uh, you know, and even I know myself as a manual handling instructor. And also, again, in Ireland and in a lot of places, a minimum course has to be three hours. Right. And mostly for value. And it's not worth it. Otherwise, if you're going to go and charge someone 70 quid for value handling you know mm-hmm. um, it has to be justified so what I you know if, you, if you've if you done a manual handling course with me and what my clients love is after three years you don't have to do the four hour course on the theory because you've done it with me three hours so I know you know and then it's just a practical and it works that mm-hmm. way and that's what I mean by I make my money somewhere else like I know every three years it's going to cost like I, I give them the discounts it's 50 quid a cert for me and that's it. And that's every three years, you know. And if you're going to retainer, you get me as in pretty much 24-7 if there's an accident. Like I've often, if, if I got a phone call now and there was an accident on site, I'd be like, sorry, I'm going. Yeah. And whatever you site they're balance, on, yeah. I, I'm there. And just to know that they've got themselves covered and that's yeah. all part of it. Like, yeah. So whoever is watching this, make sure you say because your phone number will be on the bottom of every single video because this is probably one of the most important videos here that we made because every businessman should use your service yeah they should they have to yeah it's not like maybe oh maybe next week they have to no but they do and and again I'm in as I said I'm in a networking group so just even if it's the most random thing that you might you think you need just give me a call and I guarantee you like I'll be able to sort out your health and safety your HR your apprentices if you're looking for someone to kind of do an apprenticeship with or basically anything that you need um insurance there's, there, I know someone that's going to be able to make sure that you're. You basically, fully you basically, you, you, you could be the business advisor in terms of health and safety and HR. Yeah, yeah. Even if you can't sort it yourself, you know. Somebody I know, that's so, I know somebody who'll be able to organize everything, and yeah. that's the beauty of you know networking as well at the same yeah, time. Yeah, brilliant, so. brilliant. Thank you very much for having me. I think we're going to wrap up now. We covered a lot of stuff. I think we helped yeah. a lot of people. You, I even yeah. picked your brains here as well, so I'm glad. No, yeah, no, I, 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 I hope I come across well because I didn't. I, you, you, you put me on the spot for a few things, but ah, I enjoyed it. That's why I'm. <laughs> here for yeah <laughs> thank you for coming bravo no, thank you very much thank, thank you, you guys for watching thank bye. you bye bye